In this video, we are going to solve an interesting investing problem and we are going to solve it using SQL. The problem statement is whether one should do SIP or they should buy the dip. So we have an index fund or a stock, right? And we have two types of investors. We have the passive investors like A, they invest 10,000 rupees on the first working day of every month as soon as they get their salary on the very first business day of the stock market they would go ahead and invest these 10,000 rupees in that particular fund or the stock and then we have B who takes active interest in the market and they invest 2,000 rupees every time the stock falls 0.5% or more from the previous day right so they're not going to invest on a specific day. They look at the pattern and if the stock had a fall more than 0.5%, then only they'll invest. So what do you think? Which investing strategy will yield better result and to what extent? So here we have the Nifty 50 data values or the stock price and their corresponding dates. So for the year 2022, the first official working day was 3rd of January and this was the stock price. So according to our A investor, this is the first working day of the month. They will go ahead and invest 10,000 bucks in our Nifty 50. Now our more active investor will look for days when there was an actual fall. Like on 6th of January, there was a fall which was greater than 0.5%. The value reduced from 17925 to 17745. So on this particular day, they would go ahead and invest 2000 rupees. In order to solve this in a simple manner, I've made some assumptions. The first one is I've divided the price by 100. So 17625 will become 176.25. The next one is you can buy portion of a stock so if you are buying 1.5 stock that is allowed and the third one is we are not considering any dividend or buying tax in these transactions right let's move forward so first we'll calculate two columns we will check if our date is the first working day of the month and if the value actually decreased by 0.5 percent or more so we can see here 3rd of January is first working day of the month. So we are going to specify yes. The rest of the values are not the first working day of the month. So we are going to specify no. Then in the next column, here the value actually decreased by more than 0.5%, right? So we are going to specify yes. And if that was not the case, we are going to specify no. If you look, the value is increasing here. Only here it has decreased and decreased significantly, right? So first we are going to add these two columns. Then we are going to add two more columns, which are very simple. So if the value is yes for the first working day of the month, then A would invest 10,000 rupees. So we would specify 10,000 in front of yes for this column. Similarly, if the value decreased by 0.5% or more, we would specify 2000 in this particular column, which represents the amount invested by B. So now from these two columns, we have essentially six columns, right? Moving forward, we will add two more columns, which are also fairly simple. We are simply dividing the 10,000 or this value right here by the stock price. Remember, I have divided this value by 100. So the shares bought by A would be 56.73. Similarly, here the shares bought by B would be 11.27. Another thing you need to notice, you will only have one day where A would invest. That would be the first working day of the month, right? B may invest multiple times depending on whenever we have a tip, okay? So these are the columns that we are going to create. Then we need the current share price, right? We are going to take the sum of A amount to get the total amount invested by A, B amount to get the total invested by B, 
sum of shares bought by A, sum of shares bought by B. Then we are going to multiply these shares with the current share price and that's going to give us the current value of A, similarly current value of B and we will use these current value and the amount invested to calculate the return percent. So when we solve a problem on paper, it becomes really easy to actually solve it in SQL or any other language. So now that we have our logic, we know how we are going to create it. Let's move to Snowflake and write our SQL. So this is how our data looks like now. Okay. We can see that I've divided by 100, which is why I see the value as 176.25. Now for the first column, we need to identify the starting date of the month. How are we going to do that? We are going to do that with the help of analytical function. So let's give it an alias. And now I'm going to get the minimum va value or the minimum date of transaction date column. I'm going to partition by uh, the month here. So for that particular month of that particular year, what was the minimum date, right? So I'm going to partition by, right? Uh, I'm going to specify, uh, I'm going to extract month from transaction date, right? And I'm going to also partition by, right? I'm going to partition by these two. I'm going to call it minimum of date right let's run it and i got this value so as we can see this is the minimum date so i'll just add a condition here right i'm going to specify case when transaction date is equals to this date then yes so if my transaction date is equals to minimum date, then that's the starting date. Otherwise, it's not the starting date, right? So um, I'm going to call it start of month. And let's run it one more time. Oh, I missed the end. So yes, this is the start of a month as expected. And these are not. So our third column is ready. Let's create the fourth one, right? For that, we need to identify whenever there was a drop that was more than 0.5%, right? More than or equals to 0.5%. So if we had this value right here, it would have been easier to compare. And for that, we are going to use lag function. So I'm going to specify lag of closing price, right? Over, I'm going to order by transaction date and I'm going to call it previous price. Okay. Let's see if this is going to work. So you see now I have the previous day price as well, right? So previous price. Now all I need to do is I need to check uh, or let me calculate the percent first. So I'm going to specify closing price so if my closing price minus this divided by my previous price right is greater than if this price is greater than minus of 0.5 right now this price, right? Let's multiply it by 100 so that we have a little more clarity. Now this value right here, it indicates that we had a drop, which was a little more than 1%. So I can write a case statement. So I can specify case when this value, right? And since it's negative, so if this value is less than equals to minus 0.5, if it's, if the drop is more than 0.5%, more than or equals to 0.5%, then we can specify yes. 
else no and and we are going to call it uh, drop more than five person right let's run this and you see only for this value right here we saw that there was a drop more than 0.5 percent right similarly here as well you see consistently the value was dropping okay so here we have all these yes that means the values were dropping consistently now let's move forward to adding the other two columns that we discussed so i'm going to give this an alias right let's call it uh, base data right we are going to treat it as a ct right so i'm going to specify with base data as and now let's query it one more time select star from base data Now we need to add two more columns here. I'm going to specify B dot star. And these are fairly simple, right? Case when start of month is equals to yes, then 10,000, else zero, and as a amount. Similarly, uh, let's get the other one as well. If the second value, if the drop more than 5% is yes, then we are going to invest 2000, right? And this is going to be called B amount. Let's run this as well. And we have an extra comma. Let's remove that. And you see, we got the correct value as well. This should be 2000 instead of 200. Let's correct that. And we got the values that we were looking for. Now we need to add the other two columns where we are going to capture the number of share spot. I can add them here as well, but let's create another alias for a little more clarity. So I'm going to call this uh, amounts bought as. So, so now we have our six columns, right? Uh, and I'm going to add the two other columns, which are fairly simple. I'm going to divide the A amount by closing price. So I'm going to divide the A amount by closing price. And that would be uh, A shares right similarly i'm going to do the other one which is uh, i'm going to divide the b amount by the closing shares and i'm going to call it b shares right let's check this out as well and now we have the shares as well right so we have the columns that we needed. Now, all we need to do is we need to add this to identify the total investment, the total shares, and then we can calculate the current value. But for that, we first need the current value, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it another alias and I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to call this share info, share info as and then i'm going to call another block where i'm going to identify the current price right so i'm going to call current for this current share price as select star from nifty data this is my table okay and what do i need here i need the closing price and I'm going to use something that I do not like much, but I'm going to order by transaction date descending and I'm going to take the limit as one. So it's going to give me just one row, which is the most recent and what is the price for that particular day. So I got that. Now all I need to do is 
I need to take a Cartesian join. So I'm going to join my share info. Let's call it S and I'm going to join this current share price. Let's call this C, right? I'm going to join this. So we will have these, this value right here, closing price in front of all the rows. So what will happen? I will have the closing price for the day in front of all the rows. Now, all I need to do is I need to take the sum and let's call it current closing price, right? Current closing price. Okay. Now, all I have to do is I have to take the sum of my amounts, right? So let's quickly do that. So this becomes the investment amount of A, this becomes the investment amount of B. These are the total number of shares that A holds. These are the total number of shares that B hold. And these are the current value for A and B, right? Now what we need to do is we need to calculate the return that they have. Before we go ahead and calculate the returns, let's see our output. And this is how it's going to look like. So one thing we can clearly see is the investment amount or the principal amount invested by B is less. A was able to invest more in the passive way of investing. B invested slightly less. Let's see if the returns of A were higher or if the returns of B were higher. Okay. So I've created another block. I'm going to call it final data. Okay. And now we just need our two other columns, right? So it's fairly straightforward. I'm going to subtract the investment amount from the current valuation and I'm going to divide that by the investment amount. Let's do the same for B as well. So I gave them an alias A return percent and B return percent and we can see that A has a return percent of 27% and B has a return percent of 31. So B's return are higher. But if you look at these values, because A invested more, his current valuation is more. So if B had effectively invested a little more amount instead of 2000, if B had invested maybe 2300, then in that particular case, their amount investment amount would have been comparable and B would have made more money. So buying a dip looks like a great strategy, at least in this particular case, but you have to be careful with the amount that you invest each time. Now there are two other candidates with a slightly different approach. They make lump sum investments and the criteria is C invests 50,000 rupees every time the stock falls 2% or more from the previous day. So B was investing 2000 every time the stock was falling 0.5% or more. C is investing 50,000, but the criteria is that the stock should fall 2% or more. D is also investing lump sum. D is investing 1 lakh rupees every time, but the stock should fall 5% or more. And D is not looking just for the last day. If in the last five sessions together, the stock has fallen more than 5%, then D will go ahead and invest 1 lakh or 100,000 rupees. What do you think? Which investing strategy will yield better result in this case? Solve this and post your answers in the comment section.